Well, we had the NXT 2.0 versus Team Black and Gold match. Team 2.0 was all heels, Tony D'Angelo, Grayson Waller, Carmelo Hayes, and Braun Breaker against the Babyface team, which was all Babyfaces, Tommaso Ciampa, Johnny Gargano, Pete Dunne, and L.A. Knight. And to his credit, L.A. Knight did make an awesome Babyface comeback. Mm -hmm. But I just cannot buy into L.A. Knight as a Babyface. There was no turn... He just all of a sudden was with this group feuding with with Grayson Waller, so I guess that made him a baby face. But this is quite literally New Blood Millionaires Club. Yes, the oh, wow. old guys that were supposed to be putting out to pasture are the baby faces, and so much better than the new guys that are supposed to be our future. Well, this match went thirty eight minutes, and that was way too long. Mm -hmm. And the story they do this with all of these war games matches. It's like in the old days, you would do all of the, uh, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, heel comes in, baby face. You do all your violence and everything like that. Then they lower the cage and the match beyond begins. And I don't remember the match beyond being like, you know, 20 minutes. It was like no. there was a, a, a burst of violence and then somebody either submit or surrender, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. The way they do it now is... You, you. I don't want to say waste time, but like nothing's happening for the first 20 minutes of this match as you get everybody into the ring. And then after that, when War Games begins, it's like a full 20-minute on, four-on-four match. And, and that means they got to do... After 15 minutes of that, you yep. do the reset where both guys stand on each side of the rope so that you know that we're starting this match over 20 minutes in. Yes. And if you're mindlessly watching WWE television, I'm sure you like it because... You half pay attention, you see a cool move, you see another cool move, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But, like, this takes forever. And at the end, of course, in order to have a finish in war games, everybody must be killed by a giant move, leaving only, like, two people. Because otherwise it's like, oh, well, you know, well, why didn't that guy break it up or whatever? So it's just, like, a long period. And it wasn't bad, but it just went on forever. And... At the end of the day, it came down to it was Braun Breaker in there with Chomp and Gargano. And they've been selling the entire show. This is another one. This is probably the end for Johnny Gargano. So let's send him out on a great note as he goes maybe to AEW or whatever. Or maybe he'll resign. I don't know. But anyway, so it's Gargano and Ciampa. They're teasing like it's the last time they'll ever be together. So they're doing all these DIY spots. They do the big double knee and everything like that. It gets broken up. Uh, actually, uh, the referee got yanked away by Carmelo Hayes. And then finally, uh, Ciampa goes to do his uh, sit-out pedigree, and he gets speared through a table by Braun Breaker. And Braun Breaker grabs him. He does the Goldberg press slam into a power slam, and he pins him. And it was a right finish. Right, I, guy won, yes. Yep, the, the, uh, the next challenger, and who should be the next champion, by the way. He pinned the champion. I was fully expecting that Johnny Gargano was going to be pinned, but Johnny Gargano was re-signed through this show. It doesn't mean he's not going to re-sign a long-term deal. I don't know. You know, Johnny Gargano's got a lot of injuries. He's been working for a long time. He may be happy getting paid to do part-time NXT and full-time as a trainer or whatever, and uh, he may re-sign. So I think they didn't want to, like, humiliate or beat the guy or anything like that. And it was a better finish to have Braun Breaker pin Tommaso Ciampa anyway. So at the end of the day, I would not in any universe say that this match was bad. It would have been much better, shorter. If you would have went 28 minutes and 14 seconds, it would have been a far superior match. There were a lot of green guys in this match. Uh, they worked around them well because you also had a lot of great workers in the match. So at the end of the day, I mean... I would say it was good, but it could have been significantly better. What they did, there was a lot of really good stuff. But again, my issue is storytelling in that there were black and gold chants throughout this entire match. Yes. DIY cleanly hit their finish on Braun Breaker and had him pinned clean straight to the right in the middle of the ring with them not if if uh, Hayes hadn't pulled the ref. And it's like, again, they're telling the story that, man, that old NXT that's gone really is so much better than the show now. Like, I, I don't understand structuring a match so that they chant black and gold the whole time. And again, I don't understand... 
highlighting DIY with that so that they actually had Braun Breaker pinned dead to rights, if not for a ref pull, before putting him over. Like, if you want to give the DIY moment, by all means, have them hit someone else. But to do that to Braun, I just didn't see the point. Now, yes, Braun looking strong with the win is the right call, but I'm just like, they're chanting black and gold the whole time, and it's like, black and gold's dead. Well, the other thing, too, is if you're going to do the veterans versus the young guys in a promotion where you actually want to get the young guys over, I mean, the young guys should be the baby faces, and they should get the big win over the heels in a war games match. I mean, that's how you elevate people. The WWE does this all the time. It's like, you know, we want to get the young guys over. They're going to get over just being in the match with this, you know, Gargano and Chomp and these over guys. And they're they're team wins, but Braun Breaker won. I mean, nobody gave two fucks about any of the other guys in the match, any of the other heels. So at least they got that right, where one of the new blood type guys that people actually like uh, got the win in the end over the champion. So... Yeah, the the psychology was backwards. The old guy, I don't know. It the was bolt cutters forgot their spot. Oh yeah, the bolt cutters. So yeah, they uh, when uh, what's his name? The, Tony D'Angelo. So Tony D'Angelo comes in and uh, he he locks the cage door shut. Yeah, that's after. Which of he, course now his guys can't just, get in either. If I can interrupt you just for a second, so Tony's under there. He's pulling out all these plunder. Pulling tables and and kendo sticks and and all kinds of stuff, and then all of a sudden he pulls on a a crutch and brings Dexter Loomis out with it. Oh, that was Trick I, Williams. Oh, I'm sorry, Trick Williams. So he Dexter's out there for why I I'm not 100 percent sure he didn't he didn't help stop the heels from cheating and pulling out more plunder or anything. He, he, he runs him off and, and that's where the chain comes into play. The chain's right there. And then Brian continues story. He chains his door shut, which of course that does keep the baby faces out, but also keeps his own fucking team out. Right. So, uh, you know, Braun breaker is, uh, is going to come in. Who's on his fucking team, by the way. And he can't get into the fucking cage because the, they're trying. LA, to... But L.A. Knight already demonstrated you can just yeah, climb just over. Yeah, climb the in. Bank. But Braun Breaker's like, I ain't fucking climbing a cage. You kidding me? So the the ref's trying to chop this fucking chain off, and he can't get the bolt cutters to work. And so Braun Breaker's, you know, Mister Alpha Male, he's a Steiner. I think he broke the. And the, uh, uh, instead of cutters. instead of climbing over, he's like, "Give me those fucking bolt cutters." He's like, this nerd, this skinny nerd can't do it, but I can open this fucking chain. <laughs> so this poor guy gets these bolt cutters, and now he's trying to open the fucking thing, and it won't open. Nope. And we're just looking at the guy. And at first I was like, God, what a way to kill a baby face. Then I realized he was a heel. But right. anyway, so he's trying desperately to do this, and they're actually filming him not able to get into this fucking cage. And they cut inside, and the other wrestlers are looking at him like, what the fuck's going on here? And so finally, you know, the director or whatever's like, he can't get in. Get off this guy. So they go back to the, the ring, and then all of a sudden you hear this big crash. And uh, and somehow he got in. I don't even know how. He might have actually just tore the fucking door open with his Steiner strength. But, uh, yeah, that was a disaster. He knew there was going to be disasters on this show. That was one of them. I always talk about this guy's speed. And not only was he running fast, I don't know if you guys know anything about physics. Oh, educate us. But when one guy is going really fast one direction and hits a stationary man, that's bad. When one guy is running one direction and the other guy is running at him and they they clunk into each other, that's more bad. If Darby Allen leaves the tunnel at 2 p.m. at 30 miles an hour. He left the tunnel at 2 p.m. and he hit this guy at 159. <laughs> he actually went backwards in time. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.